Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. First off, let me let me say this, you guys. Um, hopefully, you guys don't hear the fan in the background, but it's like a hundred and fourteen degrees today where I live at. So the fan is going to be on. Now, with that being said, I'm going to try to project my voice even louder. Um, because in a minute, this fan is going to be blowing so hard that my noise canceling microphone ain't going to be able to cancel this noise because my fan going to be next to me like it's a co-host. Okay. Okay. It's just too hot. It's just too hot. But anyway, welcome to the Married to Medicine review. And it is episode nine, season nine, episode nine. And, uh, let's get started. Shall we? We shall. This episode, again, this is, of course, Mary's Medicine. It's episode nine, and it's called The Breaking Point, okay? So, it opens up with Quad starting the Bravo montage, and Mason is getting ready for his day, and she asks him why his face looks like that, and he says, because I'm mad. Quad says, well, get glad in the same pants you got mad in. And that is hilarious to me. And they both start cracking up and so did I. That is a response that you can ask, uh, (laughs) I was going to say any kid I'm around and and I say things like that, okay? (laughs) Honey, you better get glad. Continuing on. All right, and cut to Dr. Damon having lunch with Dr. Heavenly. In his confessional, he says that he has two locations and I want to say congratulations on that and I love that okay come on through with black excellence okay now Dr. Heavenly talks about losing her mom all right now cut to Dr. Contessa saying that she loves Heavenly like a sister and that they fight like sisters (laughs) Dr. Scott says well y'all fight a little worse than sisters and I am leaning towards believing that they fight a little worse than sisters cut to Audra who is a friend of the show brought on by Dr. Heavenly, which we all are the veterans of watching these reality wives. We all know that when they say they're friends, it's 50 50, meaning 50% of the times they are a real friend of this person in real life. Then the other 50% of the time is like they met at a cocktail party. And maybe they seen each other out and about two times and they exchanged phone numbers and now they being brought on the show as a friend. Okay. Very superficial. Some of them, the so-called friendships, the friends of and bringing them on the show, sometimes they can be very superficial. Now, I had heard across the YouTube nation that um which I haven't watched it yet so I didn't hear it with my own ears but I had heard that um Dr. Heavenly said I don't even know Audra and I'm like well wait a minute now wait a minute now you ain't supposed to say that even on your own YouTube because you're the one that brought her on as a friend so what you mean you don't know her girl anyway so cut to Audra announcing that earlier this year they got married in the courthouse and now they want a wedding ceremony with an expensive budget. Hey, if you got it, 
then do it. But here's the thing. If you did it earlier this year already at the courthouse, and now you want to do it later with an expensive budget, why wouldn't you, if you knew that this is what you wanted to do, why wouldn't you just wait until you can do it the way that you truly dreamed of? I don't understand. What was the rush? It makes me feel like there was some kind of rush to become legally married. Because otherwise, if you already know, I'm going to have to redo this later this year or, or whatever. Like, that that's weird to me. Why, why not just wait? Why not just wait? I don't know. It, it's just weird. I mean, I, in my life, um, some of my family members, I've seen, I've seen this go both ways. I've seen people who, um, they saved up money to buy a house, not for a wedding. So therefore they went ahead and, um, got married at the co courthouse and they put all their money down on a house for their family. Okay. And I'm not judging. You do what you want. You know what I'm saying? They got married at the courthouse. They never did. They've been married for over 10 years now. And um, I think close to maybe 13 years. And they never did a redo, a reova, nothing like that. Um, but they, they keep on by every time they save up money, they just buy a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger house. That's their prerogative. That's what they want to do instead of having a big wedding. Because I kind of thought that they would eventually have, you know, like what Audra is describing in this show right now, like a do-over with a big wedding. But no, it's been, if I'm not wrong, I think I'm correct, but I think they've been married for at least like 13 to 14 years, okay? They have not done a big a do-over, but they just keep buying, they, they keep investing their money in property and buying a bigger house. So kudos to them, do what you want, you know what I'm saying? That's that's their money. That's what they want to do. Now, on the other hand, another person in my family did save up, and I mean, they were so proud. They saved up thirty thousand dollars to have a big wedding. And honestly, and 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 I'm gonna go ahead and say this because I'm not giving you guys any names or even how the person's related to me. So this is still, you know, I'm not giving nobody's business. But these people. They were married for about the same amount of time, 10, 13 years, something like that. And they still in a, still are in an apartment. So, you know, everybody can do what they want to do. And it's just interesting. I said all that to say this. It's interesting to see people going different routes and, and how they turned out later in life. You know, because it once I saw they were still in an apartment, because um, they live out of town, and I and I didn't know that they were in an apartment until I went to visit them. And once I saw that, like, still, even after all these years, you still in an apartment? And it was a nice apartment, okay? I'm not dissing an apartment, so don't take it like that. I ain't dissing an apartment. I'm not. So don't even come at me like that, and do not take it like that. Because I I actually feel like there are benefits in, in um, living in an apartment life, because shit first of all you get things taken care of that you know if if something happened with your sink you just you don't have to call a plumber you call the landlord and say hey come fix this your yard that's included already so you don't even have to deal with uh, a gardener and whether or not he's good like all all of this stuff is just taken care of it's just taken care of you don't have to pay for trash you know and a lot of times you don't have to pay for water like all of that is just included in your rent you ain't got to worry about nothing so anyway the point is we ain't even gonna go there i forgot we was talking about married to medicine i was getting ready to compare your when you're living in a house or living in an apartment i've done both and there's benefits and setbacks to both of them good things and bad things about that however it's just all up to the person whether they want the court wedding which you know is minimal cost versus the big dream wedding and uh, and then you still stay in an apartment so it is what it is but anyway moving right along and actually drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about um Audra which is who we're talking about right now them getting the court wedding but then also later doing a big wedding, a big, ex she said expensive wedding. Why not just wait? That's my question. If you're going to do that anyway, just wait. Or, or, or hear me out, y'all. Did she decide to do that to have a storyline to qualify to be on Married to Medicine? Is that the reason for that? So my question then becomes... If they weren't on Mar Married to Medicine, would they still be 
planning an expensive wedding? That's the question because they already got married. So what's this? Where did this come from? Moving right along. Cut to Anila in the car driving her mom to what she is calling her hair showroom. Okay, now. So we're going to talk about the conversation they have in the car first. Um, Anila, <laughs> this is so funny to me, y'all, because she's acting like, oh, only her mom can take care of her kids because she can't just hire any random babysitter. A babysitter can't show your kids love and, and only the mom and the grandma can show your kids love and all this kind of stuff. First of all, I want to say that's not true. I know for a fact that that's not true. But I do understand what Anila is saying when she says, I don't want a bunch of random babysitters. Yeah, I 1000% agree with that. Um, as my child was growing up, no, I did not have random babysitters. Um, I was fortunate enough to get word of mouth from people that I trusted whose kids had already, you know, was watched by that person. So, yeah, I, I, I got word of mouth from people that I trusted. I never had random babysitters, and, and I wouldn't have any random babysitters, okay? Because I was willing to almost be, when it was, when it was getting hard to find one, I was willing to be a stay-at-home mom, okay, because I was like, I refuse to get a random babysitter. I'm not getting ready to, ooh, look how old school I am. I was going to say, I ain't getting ready to pick up the newspaper, look at the classifiers, and just find any old body. No, I watched too much Lifetime for that. No, okay, this ain't going to be no hand that rocks nobody's cradle. Anyway, um, so I understand her concern, but at the same time, it's not realistic to actually believe in your mind that nobody can watch your kids except you or your mother that's a little ridiculous okay there's a medium in there somewhere all right so she needs to try to find it and it's so funny because later we're gonna see what happens when if her, her if her mind still feels that way so they pull up to what is now being called by bravo in the little um title um Gosh, I forgot what it's called. But anyway, when they show the name of things or people, it's called Anila's Beauty Warehouse. So she called it her hair showroom. Bravo called it Anila's Beauty Warehouse. So I'm thinking post-production probably said, what do you want us to call this? And she said, uh, Beauty Warehouse. So I'm sure probably in the end of it all, it'll end up being called Beauty Warehouse. Um, so she's selling hair, raw Indian hair. She says that a lot of women, um, their hair thins when they're pregnant. I thank God mine didn't. And, um, and actually I hadn't heard of that, but I've heard of other things happening and I know what, what happened to me while I was pregnant and everything, but you know, I've only been pregnant once and, uh, you know, so I, I didn't know, I didn't even know that your hair could thin, could start thinning when you become pregnant. Um, I've heard of a, a lot of other things and there's, there's a few things that happened to me when I became pregnant. Like you're a woman's body truly, truly changes and not just what we were taught in like the fifth grade in our sex education class. No, it changes for real, for, for real, for real. Um, when we grow in a human, okay, a whole human. All right. A whole human. Um, that little old human in there takes a lot of our vitamins and nutrients and all this kind of stuff. And if there's any doctors that got any more input, uh, shouts out to you, please come on in my comments and let me know, you know, because you can say it clearer than probably what I am saying right now. But what I can say is the woman's body, when we are growing a human, not a plant, baby, but a human inside of us, it morphs and grows and goes in a lot of different directions that we may or may not be prepared for or may not have heard of and and everything I have a friend that said every time she was pregnant her calcium level became so low to where her bones broke very easily okay and I was like damn damn your bones breaking and this lady she went on and she had four I think I'd do one I'd be good if all my bones was breaking um mm -mm, baby but anyway anyway so 
shouts out to moms, okay? Because sometimes we just do not get the credit we deserve, all right? So sometimes we got to pat our own self on the what back. Continuing on. All right, cut to Dr. Karen having a gentleman's affair, bourbon and Botox to relax. Um, to which, you know what, I don't recall any of the men getting any Botox. Um, they did, If they did, they didn't show it. Dr. Eugene mentions the O oh, shot. In the confessional, Dr. Eugene tells Toya, you be on here like you're a sexual monster. And I swear you're not. All right. <laughs> Look at this photo. All right. I had to stop to just, man, I had to insert this photo. It cracked me up. It really did. Because as we all know, okay, if you've watched any season of Married to Medicine before, uh, Toya does always act like she, even at the O Shop party, even at the old shop party, she tells Dr. Jackie, but you see how wet I am? You see how wet I am? And she says, okay, yes, girl, yes, girl. And Toya says, I be needing two panty liners. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you know what? First of all, I stop reaching because why did you even feel like you had to say that? If that was true, because to be honest, I don't even feel like that was true. I, I, and her just, the way she said it, you see how wet I am? Like, she was, like, begging, like, fishing for her to say, yes, yes, you're great, whatever. How the fuck would Dr. Jackie know? Oh, well, they did say that Toya got on her and her. But, um, because I was going to say, how would she know? You don't need, if you are not, <laughs> if you're not bisexual or a lesbian, you don't need another woman, especially who's just your platonic friend, to confirm how wet your vagina is. Okay? I'd never ask my friends to do that. Um, whether they were a doctor or not. Because I know this was a doctor situation and they were she was doing a doctor procedure. I understand that. But I I never even my regular doctor, who's not my friend, I don't when I go have procedures, I don't be like, you see how wet I am, doctor? Like that's weird and a bit it's weird to me um anyway it, that i don't know that just made me feel weird it made me feel weird um and even though i am i am actually bisexual yes i am and i wouldn't even want to confirm whether my platonic friends was wet or not i don't give a damn that's not what's going on that is not none of my business <laughs> okay Dr. Jackie was just there to give her that O shot. That's it. It She's not there to measure. And I know, I know that Dr. Jackie delivered uh, Toya's. I know that Dr. Jackie is Toya's OBGYN. Because when the show first started, they talked about that. So I know that. And I know that, you know, that you should be able to talk to your doctor about everything medical. But in that moment, to me, her want Dr. Jackie to confirm that her vagina is very wet. That was not medical. <laughs> that was not medical. So I was a little grossed out by it. Let me know how, how y'all felt in the comments. Was y'all grossed out or did y'all feel like that was normal? Um, and here I am sitting up here being bisexual and still grossed out by that. I don't know. Anyway, so the men, they go to get massages and manicures and while doing so dr eugene says he's used to working and grinding so hard that sometimes he says sometimes he looks up and he's missed important stuff in his kid's life dr eugene reveals that he may be done with the er life especially when dr damon says he hasn't worked a weekend in six years okay okay now then the guys um, <laughs> decide, now I kind of, I'm going to say they, they messed with him, but I'm going to say that they kind of hazed the new guy, Dr. Martin, who is a dentist, who is Audra's husband. He was getting a massage and <laughs> the guys took over his massage without telling him. First, Curtis uh, started rubbing on his back, told the, he was getting a real massage and he took over for the masseuse. And he started rubbing his back, and then Dr. Karen got in on it, and he took over from um, Dr. Uh, I mean, uh, from Curtis, and started massaging his ears. Dr. Damon 
uh, motions to Karen to start massaging his ears. So Dr. Karen starts massaging Dr. Martin's ears. And, um, and the guys just start bust up laughing. I knew they weren't going to be able to hold it for long. And he said, oh, man, i tell you what. Look what y'all, man. But to me, that was cute. It was funny. It was them hazing the new guy. All right. Moving right along. And I really wish, like, the women could just chill out and be like that. Just chill, man. Just chill. Continuing on. Cut to Toya going to a spiritual advisor called Lady C. Instead of talking to her husband because she has a lot of his, because, excuse me, he has a lot of his own issues. And she said they started weighing on me. Toya said emotionally he's not there. All right, cut to Dr. Eugene going to visit Dr. Damon at his office so that he can discuss the transition after the ER. I think that's awesome because you should always do what it is that you love. And Eugene said he needs inspiration. And and actually, I, I really, really like how he um, used a metaphor of, you know, when you have a like a dream car and you save up for it, and you just think that car is the greatest car in the world, and you have it for years, and then it begins to break down, and it's kind of hard to give it up. And Dr. Damon said, yeah, I understand. You know, he said, that's what I had to do with my Hummer. He said, because then when you go look, when you look, you realize, he said, there's a lot of new cars out there, new and better cars. And I was like, dang, that is such a good um metaphor because we all can remember our our first great car you know because I, I had some buckets before I got my dream car you know I had some buckets first you know I had to get the buckets in order to get to work in order to have the money to get the car that I want so it wasn't my very first car my first car was not my dream car which I think he said his first car was his dream car I'm like okay so then you you must already have money or whatever but uh for those of us regular civilians um, <laughs> sometimes we, we got to get some buckets first <laughs> before we can get our dream car. <laughs> and you know what? I am not trying to be funny, but what just popped in my head, that's the same thing like relationships. Sometimes you got to go through some, um, bad folks before you get the good person who's meant to be in your life. Okay. 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 Shouts out to everybody who know what I'm talking about right now. Um, so you learn from that stuff and you, and you go on to, to be bigger and better with someone who's bigger and better and best for you, best fitted for you. Okay. So you, you got some, some mistakes, but then that all clears the way because you learn and you go on to someone better. Okay. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. Cut to Toya back at Lady C's office, the spiritual advisor, and Toya says after 14 years of constantly giving support to Eugene, she is starting to wonder where is mine. And I'm going to tell you something, um, that's not good. That needs to be taken care of and not swept under the rug. Okay, you guys, now cut to, <laughs> cut to Anila saying her mom has been there for two weeks and has turned her house into a junk yard. Her mom says you and Mrs. Gomez didn't teach your kids nothing. She told Anila it's her fault that her kids don't clean up after themselves. In a confessional, Anila <laughs> ponders if her mom is helping or hindering by <laughs> making things worse. She has a photographer coming and the house is a mess. Anila asks her mom to sit down so they can talk. When she finally gets her mom to stop trying on her clothes, her mom says, I'm not going to follow your rules, not ever, ever in my life, end quote. She said, I'm here to help you, so you follow my rules. First of all, okay, here I am with my little old countdown. First of all. They should have had this rule talking before she arrived, point blank. And what, period? I would not have done it that way at all. I would have already established 
a meeting of the minds okay that's when you have an understanding okay your minds need to meet so we would have a meeting of the minds first point blank period okay anila yells at her mom you're in my house that's not how it works girl you you should have had this conversation already um and it and it 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 <laughs> took me back to the 80s with um uh, Will Smith's song, Parents Just Don't Understand. Uh, or it might have been the 90s. That might have been the 90s. That probably was the 90s. Parents Just Don't Understand. Um, but that's probably how my child feels. So we will move right along. Now, Anila tells her mom, I'm 42. You can't tell me what to do. Her mom says, I can go. <laughs> Anila rebuts with, or you can change her mom says i'm older than you i know what's right what's wrong you quiet take it or leave it honey that's what that mama said i know what's right what's wrong you quiet take it or leave it i can go um i say leave it okay you in my house I i'm not gonna take anything that i don't need to take in my house i'm just not i don't yeah, yeah, look, look, uh-uh. I'm not taking anything, uh, mm -mm. crazy, hindering, bizarre, over the top in my house. So, no, I'd have to leave it. But at the same time, like I said, you guys, sages, you guys already know how I am, how I work, how my mind is. If you've been listening to me for any period of time, I would have had a meeting of the minds first. We would not be two weeks later in my house having this conversation about whether I want to take it or leave it. And how she ain't ever, ever, ever. She said ever twice. And I added the third one. But she said she wouldn't ever, ever follow her rules. Uh, okay. And that's, that's, that's cool. You can't make nobody follow your rules. But you don't have to have them in your house like that. Especially with all that mess that they showed. That was mess. And it was mess from breakfast. And, and Anila was like, is this still from breakfast? From when the kids had breakfast this morning? And the mama said, yeah. She said, I ain't got time to be cleaning up. Um, <laughs> she said, I ain't got time to be cleaning up. Girl, what else you been doing? You are there to watch the kids. And even if you don't want to clean up after the kids, if you feel like they're old enough, which that little boy, he ain't old enough to, to wash his dishes. Um, you'll have more broken than you would have washed if you have like a three-year-old or four-year-old trying to wash their own dishes and stuff. So, you know, be realistic at some point. Get a little realistic. No matter what culture you're from, you need to be a little realistic. She, the mama's talking about, it ain't my fault that these kids don't clean up after they self. What well, they little. No, I don't know no little kid at that age that cleans up after themselves even if you do teach them it's hard enough to get them to, to, to put the plate back on the counter or throw, throw things away you know but you do your best and you keep doing it until they they're old enough and it sets in and then they do it but it's not Anila's fault that her little kids are not cleaning up after themselves um but like I said you can begin to try to teach them small things that they can do but you can only expect so much from a freaking i think that little boy is three shit he might be two you can't you know it's like the mama want them coming up out the womb washing dishes and taking out the trash that's not how that's not how it works okay but um anyway uh yeah with her yelling and shouting and leaving okay at the same time she said take it or leave it and she left up out the room said i'm done um unbeknownst to her i'd be on the phone booking her flight back home her and the husband They'd be going back home, and of course, I'd give them kisses and hugs and let them know I love you, but for the sake of our um, mom-daughter relationship, you've got to go. I love you very much, but this ain't working out. My bad for not getting it clear with y'all before you came down. I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Now i got to hire somebody to come in and clean up this mess, and I'm back at square one. But thank you so much for being willing. Okay, because you do sometimes need to tell people, thank you for being willing. All right. Thank you for being willing. But no, thanks. And you know what I'm saying? Um, give them some good hugs, kisses on the cheek and whatnot. And see ya. Okay. Send them right on. They go away. All right. Wish for a, a, a safe flight. Call me when you get home. All of that stuff. 
But you've got to go. I'd be as soon as she walked her butt up out that room, I'd be on on online. Actually, I'm talking about I'd call. No, I'd be online. I know how to get online and book a flight. I'd get online and book a flight for you. And that's that. Now, that is the end of the show. And I will see you next time. Please remember to click like, click subscribe, all right? Because that helps me be in the what algorithm. So please help out this black content creator, okay? Because, um... Diana said, Diana Jenkins from Real Housewives of, of Beverly Hills said, it must be hard for you black content creators. So let's prove her wrong. Click like, click subscribe, ring my bell so that you know the next time that I have a, a um, video, okay? And just let's support all of the black content creators. Let's support each other in that way. And, um... You know, and you don't have to be black in order to click like, so this ain't no racial thing. I'm saying it, poking fun more so at Miss Diana Jenkins, saying it must be hard for black content creators. First of all, it's hard for all of us as content creators, okay? But uh, help me out, click like, subscribe, ring my bell, all right? Have a blessed and wonderful day. Love you guys. Bye.